Hey, hey, what's going on, guys and gals? My name is Mr. Moose, and today we're back in the garage working on a little more Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. And today we are continuing on with our 75 Ford Bronco build. We acquired this uh, truck yesterday from the auction house for $20,000. And uh, yesterday took out the motor transmission, put new suspension underneath it. And uh, she is starting to come along. She's ready to roll. We just need to put some power in it. And that's what we're going to be working on today. we got this dual carbureted V8 overhead valve engine that we're going to be working on. Got to tear it down, fix it back up, see what we come up with. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video today. If you do, as always, make sure you smack that like button for me. Share it with your friends. Comment down below. And of course, if you haven't already, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. I try to do new content for you guys each and every day. So yeah, yesterday we, uh, we got started on this. Got surprised by a couple of things about this truck. Uh, as far as like little things like the fact that it was a rear wheel drive instead of a four wheel drive. Um, and Dead Bob 77 or 777 is the guy who modded this particular uh, Bronco. And of course, if you want it, you can get it. It is available on the Steam forums. All you got to do is go to the discussions for Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. Uh, when you get into the discussion board, look on the right, look for the, the sub forum that is modding discussion or modding forum, and then go into there and look for Bob's workshop, and that's where you can get that. Or you can just click on the link that's in the show description down below, and he'll have the link for the download as well as instructions on how to put it into your game. But anyways, he reached out to me yesterday after seeing the video and addressed some of the issues that I uh, pointed out. And you know, one thing that you have to remember with this game is the guys who are doing the mods for it, it's important to remember their hands are kind of tied with some of the things that they can do. And you know, I sometimes forget that myself. And, um, and then I will, you know, along the way think, well, you know, maybe the reason this isn't is because of the game. You know, when we were talking about uh, yesterday with the brake drums not being on a car, I kind of speculated at that point that might be an issue related to the um, to the game itself. It turns out the whole you know rear wheel drive on this is also because of the limitations of the game, and I didn't I didn't even stop and think that you couldn't put a transfer case on this particular motor. My thinking was that, you know, if there's a transfer case in the game, you ought to be able to slap it on the back of these motors. I didn't think that it had to be that specific. I know a lot of the stuff in the game is blueprinted as far as like whatever is on this engine when it is, you know, when the RNG assigns it to the car, you're stuck with it, right? Because, but you know, like I know there is this particular motor has a single carbureted version a dual carbureted version it also has a supercharged version of the um, overhead valve engine so i just to kind of assume that any one of these engines could go with the v8 overhead valve transmission and then you could just put the transfer case in line with that and then after that you know build out your car and that's just not the way it is and so it turns out that there's not an engine model that he could use that would have been accurate for the period and still be four-wheel drive so this is the reason it's a two-wheel drive car uh, meaning that you know again as i said yesterday this particular vehicle would have come with either the stock i6 or you could have gotten the 302 in it, which was the, you know, small block V8. And you would have been able to get it in there as well. That that was, uh, the, the 302 was an optional engine for the car. And um, so this motor works for it, but there's not a version that had a transfer case in it. Nor is there an i6 that has a transfer case. There's a, you know some modern variations of the uh, i4 that are all time four wheel drive and then of course you've got the v8 dual overhead cam engine that's in the ford 
Raptor over there that is four-wheel drive. But that motor wouldn't be period correct for this particular car. So I get it. I understand why he did it now. You know, makes sense. And, you know, like I said, there were some two-wheel drive versions of this particular car. Um, though they are an odd ball for you to find one. Very hard to find. And a lot of them were right-hand drive. That were the ones that were out there. Many of them were right-hand drive because they were for the post office. Or they were shipped out overseas to Lake Africa. So anyway, so that was the case on why this is a two-wheel driving. And also the reason why there's no... He, he said he wanted to put front drums on it, but he couldn't do it because there really wasn't a proper model for it. Um, if he did put it on there, you wouldn't have been able to remove the suspension. So apparently there's no leaf spring front end all that for it so anywho hopefully when the jeep dlc comes out the parts that he needs are going to be in that i cannot imagine them doing a jeep dlc without putting uh, a cj5 in there even a cj7 would have had um would have had drums on it so I can't imagine that those aren't going to be in the game when they put out the, the, the Jeep DLC at the end of next month, October being next month. Unless they decide to model a late, uh, a late later model CJ7 and not a CJ5. But even they're going to do, if they, if they do one of the older military Jeeps, it's going to be drum brakes as well. So I, I can only imagine there's got to be a variant in there that is going to be four wheel drive on the front, you know, and have front drum brakes. Unless they just, you know, blow all correctness completely out the window, which is what we saw with the Dodge. They did a pretty good job modeling the Dodge um parts now but on the Mazda dlc there are a lot of rx7 owners that are up in arms about the the rx7 for the game because it's like got an early model body with a late model front end on it and they're not real happy with about that so yeah there are some some sort of peeved off rx7 owners Well, let's hope they get it right. It would be kind of cool. I'm really curious about the Jeep DLC. I hope it's got more than two vehicles in it. I'm going to get, you know, I'm not going to get upset, but I'm going to be disappointed if they don't put more variations in it. If it's just Wranglers, I mean, if they put it out and it's a Jeep Wrangler and a Cherokee, I'm just going to slam my head against the table. Gonna have to wrap my head in duct tape to keep it from exploding. It just, you can't have a Jeep DLC without a CJ5 or a CJ7. You know the Cherokee's gonna be in there. It's either a Grand Cherokee or a Cherokee Sport. Some, most likely it'll be a, I don't know. This is a DLC that they could do so much with, to be honest with you. Because you could have a, you could have the Cherokee, the Cherokee Sport, you could have a Grand Cherokee, you could have a CJ5, CJ7, a Wrangler, the Sahara. I mean, you could have one of the old Willys. I mean, there's so much they can do with it. The Comanche, um, which we've already talked a little bit about. That I seriously doubt they'll put it in there, but it would be oh so cool. But anyways, let's look at our parts that we got coming off of here. Alternator is good. We always have to replace the cam gear. The camshaft is good. Both carburetors repair it up. How cool would it be to be able to fix the carburetors? You know, take them over to a special carburetor workstation where 
you click on the table and there's a carburetor in front of you that you're going to work on and you know you got to part it completely out and then you got to put it in a dip you know dip your housing and then after that you know put it all back together oh that would be so cool you buy a rebuild kit and it's got all your little springs and jets and seats and oh yeah it'd be nice floats <sighs> that's never gonna happen though uh clip b is good clutch plate crankshaft's good crankshaft bearings are good always replace the pulley block is good both heads are good both valve covers are good Ooh, we're doing good exhaust manifolds are good always need a fuel filter gearbox is shattered so we're gonna have to find one of those ignition coil b is good need a new distributor but the button and cap are good just need wires intake manifolds good need a new oil filter oil pan's good need new rings need new pistons rocker arms got to be replaced but the power steering pump and the radiator fan are good all the rod caps repaired so those are all good i mean this really is a uh, pull and polish deal you know this is like take the engine out pull everything out hone the cylinders out real quick you know just clean her up put new rings in it slap her back out on the road round air filter serpentine belts got to get some plugs timing chain needs replaced rods are gonna get replaced water pump is good water pump pulley so really this is all just wear and tear items all the big ticket items we got with the exception of the gearbox sweet all right so let's run through this and buy everything and then we can get to building her out so uh let's see start with the cam gear get one of those we don't need a shaft don't need any bearings don't need clips don't need that i do need one of those uh we're good on engine stuff we're good on manifolds need the fuel filter don't need any of that need one of those need some plug wires and take manifolds fine need that eight of these guys one two three four five six seven eight same thing over here one two three four five six seven eight then we're good here we're good there 16 of these guys i'm not gonna count that out because i'll probably bite my tongue trying to do it there we go rod caps i don't need any this time i do need one of these guys and serpentine belts I need that one and that one then we need eight of these guys one two three four five six seven eight oh i only get seven need eight and then we come down here time chain cover there we go why did i say cover timing belt i mean chain whatever you want to call it there we go uh let's see 16 of these real quick there we go uh water pump water pump pulley there we go let's grab that why am i trying to buy a bunch of water pump pulleys i only need one i didn't even buy it there we go done let's build this engine out get her back to life all right what else is going on there's an update to the game we're now on 1.3.8 minor little adjustments um stats are now available in the menu some adjustments to the bmw knockoff as far as the positioning of the engine um fixing titles on some stuff i mean really nothing important the big updates are coming later on in another week i guess on the fifth is where we get the tuning dlc so that's going to be fun to play with next week there's also going to be these little perks that you get from finishing up the jobs that's all i can figure they are is perks maybe they're performance parts or something like that that come when you complete a job and you get a reward is a performance part or something that you can use to put on cards to uh to increase the value of the automobile so we'll see i'm not really sure what any of that is and won't know until we actually get it and play with it man it's gonna be a busy week for me next week got a couple of new games coming out next week that i'm gonna be taking a look at most notably gold rush the game is coming out 
Well, it's not coming out next week. It goes into early access for Kickstarters next week. And I've talked to the developers to make sure that I can get in to that so that I can uh, do some gameplay on it and see exactly how it looks now that they have finished the game. Because what I've had before was just a media demo. And it was very, you know, you had the truck, the the excavator, and the and the bulldozer, and it was fun. But it had no way to save your game, no way to save your progress, and um, it had limited limited access to it. So uh, it'll be cool now that it's going into pre-release to get a, a look at it and play a little bit. I'm, I'm really stoked about the way the gameplay is going to be on it because it looks like you start out without any equipment other than a shovel and a bucket and a pan and you go riverside and pan for gold for a bit so yes it sounds like there's going to be a grind in it as well all games have grind in it you just have to accept that it's part of the game model you know well, we'll go ahead and put the old filter on while we're down here. What the heck? All right, rotate the engine back to where it should be. Let's get around to the front to put the cam. Let's get around to the front and put the camshaft in. There we go. Camshaft going in. Putting your cam gear. There we go. And we'll go ahead and set our distributor in. That's good. Time and chain can go on. And what the heck, we'll go ahead and put the cover on there. Though I've said before, I probably would leave this off until I get the, uh, all the heads on and everything. All right, so put both our heads on and then we'll lace in our, uh, our push rods. Then we go here. Run all these up on here. Yeah, it's gonna be a busy month. October is. There's a couple of new games coming out that uh, that are gonna be fun to play. Uh, Mud Runner, the new version of uh, Spin Tires, comes out in October. So we're definitely gonna be checking that out. There's a new farm sim coming out called Real Farm. Uh, that I'm probably going to check out as well for the folks who like farm sim. A lot of different games. A lot of that's going to be done in live streams, and then I'll record some stuff as well. But by no means am I going to stop playing Car Mechanic. Having fun playing it. There's a lot more to it. Of course, there's the Jeep DLC coming out that we've talked about. There is, uh, what else is uh, the tuning DLC next week? So there's plenty to do with this, but just be aware. There's going to be other games coming out on the channel as well. I may go to doing two videos a day, uh, to try to accommodate everything. It's tough though to get two videos recorded, edited, processed, uploaded and everything. And then also do a live stream. Of course, it's terribly hard to do a live stream when Mediacom shuts your internet off every afternoon at 5.15, so. Which has been what's happened the last three days. So yeah, if you've been wondering, where's Moose been? No live streams. Internet goes kaput every afternoon. It's just, uh, that's one of those things. The pains of living in a small town on the coast.
All right, let's see, that's done. Let's go ahead and put our exhaust manifolds on. Or in this case, our header pipes. And then I'll hold off and putting the spark plugs in. I get over here. That one in. So one of the uh, things I've learned about this game is before you put the spark plugs in, go ahead and put your distributor together. Put your rotary button in, put your cap on, and then put these little side clips on. If you don't put the caps on before you put the spark plug in, what happens is as soon as you put that spark plug cap on, the wires will appear and it makes it that much more difficult to put um, it makes it that much more difficult to put the uh, the clips on. So I found that putting the cap on there and getting the clips on there first is much easier if you go ahead and um, if you go do it and go ahead and, and do it before you put the spark plugs in. And that is Moose's pro tip of the day for you. <laughs> Brought to you by Surefire or AC Delco, whoever you prefer to use. I'm a Bosch guy. I like Bosch plugs. It also depends on what is available, though, for that particular car. Like, there are some cars I'll use, like, the manufacturer's recommended plugs for them. But I do like Bosch plugs. Uh, usually it's either a Bosch or an AC Delco I'm putting in. All right, there we go. Put our alternator on. That out of the way while it's sitting there in our face. Put that one on, put that on. Yep. And we'll go ahead and put that belt on as well. And what the heck, we'll go ahead and throw the fan on there. Though again, it's something I would rather do in the car, but just in that mood to go ahead and put it all together here on the engine stand. Hey, what? we'll bolt the carbs up, but we won't put the, the air filter on it until it's in the car. We just have to be extra careful. Somebody in one of my, in one of the videos the other day made a comment about, yeah, I'd pay to see you try to put an engine in by yourself. I've done it. It's not that hard. You just gotta have a rope. Uh, let's see, take the engine. So you put a, you put like a little pulley back down here underneath the car. You put a little pulley down there and you run the, you run the rope through the engine bay to the pulley, out the pulley underneath the front of the car, right? And then you bring your engine hoist over. You put it in front of the car <laughs> and you put it up and you tie the rope to the end of the transmission. So then you jack it up and you put it in. And as you move it in just a little bit, you pull that rope as well where you're, you know, like whatever hand is free for you. And that will pull the transmission down. You can slide it right in there by yourself. I've done it several times. It ain't, uh, it ain't that terrible to do. It is possible. It is much easier if you have somebody with you to help you guide it in there, but it is possible to do it by yourself. You just gotta take your time. And again, that's the reason why I don't put things like fans and stuff like that on before I put it in. And usually you don't have the front clip on, you know. Like if I was if I was rebuilding this in my garage and uh, and doing it by myself. Well, in the current garage I have, I have a I have an uh, an engine uh, I have a, a crane or not a crane but a winch a ceiling winch 
uh, from working on boats, so it would be a little bit easier. But if I was doing it in, in my garage, I probably wouldn't have the radiator and you know, all this stuff on the front to worry about. I'd have a lot more clearance because I'd just have this cross cross member here in the front going in. But I still wouldn't have the fan on there. I wouldn't wouldn't have anything on top of the engine either. Nope, 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 nope. Wouldn't do it. Sorry, I had to, had to sneeze there. All right, let's put that up in the air. While that is going up, we have to go over to the uh, warehouse and excuse the indexing over here of all the parts that are in it. But I need a transmission for this vehicle. So we're going to look for a V8 overhead valve engine. Not an over Ned valve, overhead valve. Uh, not an F, just a regular one. There's got to be a transmission in here. I know there's a transmission. There we go. Here's a transmission. Told you there'd be one. Uh, then we got to go here. And we go to gearbox. And we just got to buy the usual suspects that we never can repair. And we'll sling this up in here. Let's see, we put the oil filter on there already. So this is just going to be plate. Pressure plate. And then we'll put the throw out bearing in. There we go. Gearbox. Yeah, somebody else commented on one of them about the fact that every vehicle in here has uh, manual transmissions in it, it would be cool if there were some variety in the gearboxes as well to where you had some automatics in here so that you had to put in the, um, you had to put your torque converter on there. It would be nice. Change it up a little bit so things are a little bit different. Explore more variations in it. So all that is done. Now it's just time to take the exhaust off of this guy and we'll redo it. So we've got rear muffler V8 overhead valve, middle mufflers, and then front exhaust pipe V8 overhead valve. That'll be easy to do. As I say that, I'll probably forget it. Front exhaust pipe V8 overhead valve, right? That one right there get two of those two middle mufflers middle muffler middle muffler middle mu there we go middle muffler and then that one right there should be it and then we'll put it back in pipe goes there yep pipe goes there and a pipe goes there All right. I wonder if all the exhaust is exact as well. It has to be the same. Man, that that kind of stinks that you gotta you know, that hamstrung in the game uh, with building out cars. All right, just check, double check everything, make sure all is good. Let's drop it down. Now we already did the battery, the booster assembly, all that's already done. So at this point, what are we looking at? 100% per uh, global parts. That's good. $36,736 is where we're at. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and move that over. And we'll move this guy over as well. All right, give it a tap with the old iron here. Boom! So much of it is repaired. It's just absolutely amazing. $37,633. And yeah, we're increasing the value of it ever so slightly. 100 bucks worth of detailing goes into it, and that brings the price up to 38508 Man, we're looking good. All right, well, we got to start taking all these body panels off of it now. 
And we will uh, see what happens here. Take the window out. Got to take the rear door out. Rear left door. Uh, it's funny. All right, take the top off. Take that out. Take that out. Apparently, you can take the roll bar out of this as well. Nice. Take that. All right, so that's not a fender. It's just the body. Okay. I guess he had to save that for... Oh, okay. So the roll... The, these are... That was a fender. And that's a fender. I got you. Creative use of, of body panels there. Yeah, so in order to be able to change out the grill and to be able to do that, he had to sacrifice the fenders on this, so. I got you. Well, heck, that's a good looking car right there. We'll just take that and run it. Just kidding. There are no items to work with. Oh yeah, that's that little bug in the game. Forgot about that. Yeah, that's that little glitch in the game where uh, modded modded parts can't be repaired. Which stinks, you know. But again, I, as I've said, once the game gets a uh, workshop in, the modders are going to be able to... Um, it should work at that point. And I've also told you there is a mod out there that supposedly fixes that. I just haven't jumped into it. All right, so we just basically have to buy everything out of here, which runs up, uh, it's going to eat into our profit margin. That's all right. I didn't even bother to take the, uh, the tail lights off of it. All right, so let's put her back together as she should be. So we're going to put the hood on. And we'll put the grill in. Headlights in. Put our bumper on. And then we're going to put the door. Front. I gotta take it and disassemble. I didn't take the windshield out. Put the new windshield back in. Mm -hmm. So down here at the beach, this is what this thing would look like. That is probably the way you would find it down here. It would not have the top on it. If you had a top on it, it'd be like a bimini top that you got from some aftermarket company, you know? And that would be what you would go for as far as that. And then if we go ahead and put the rest of it on here. And on. Oh, I thought I bought the glass for that. Get that out of there. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. Rear left window. Come on, let me let me go to the store. There we go. Rear left window. Don't know how I missed you, but I did. 
All right, let's put this in there. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and get the light kit on the front as well. And the brush guard. There we go. All right, let's send it to paint. Oh, wait a minute. There's one more piece that needs to be added on here. Mirror needs to go on. All right, let's go to paint. See what we come up with on this. It would be real, like you say, it would be really great if this thing had uh, fender guards on it, mud guards or mud, you know, on this. Because then I would paint the, the top of it and I would paint those completely separate. And I go for a two tone look on it. So I thought about a couple of different looks on this. Blue was a popular car for this, like a lighter blue, not, not a purple like that, but like a washed out. A lot of the colors on these were washed out. It seemed like back in the day. Let's see, let's go for, like the green version was kind of washed out, but the blue was too. The, the blue was more like a baby blue on it. But all the colors seem to be sort of paisley and washed out a little bit. The green would have been really like a, a lighter green. But we're not going to go for that. I'm going to go for green today. I want to do like a hunter green. Sort of like the same green that we did with our um Cleo sort of that sort of green I'm gonna go for a deeper green like that I think that's kind of what I'm going for yep 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 yep, yep. alright so let's send this out to the front actually do I want that to be in a gloss or do I want that to be in matte Yeah, we always do everything in gloss. Let's do this in a matte in a matte finish. We're gonna pretend this is our hunting vehicle. We don't want it in gloss. It'll show way too many scratches. Put it to the front door. I know what you're saying right now. It's hideous. It's ugly. Oh yeah. All right, take this off and take this off. Looks good. All right, so into the paint booth we go. And we are going to paint, I haven't put the tail lights in yet. Huh. We are gonna paint this piece. completely white hey no wait a minute there's white somebody else said you ought to paint the whole bronco white I'm, I'm sure they're referencing oj simpson um but um no i'm not gonna paint the whole thing white besides oj simpson's bronco was uh was a later style it was an 80s, early 90s style. Actually, I think it was, uh, yeah, it would have been like 80s or late, late 80s, early 90s Bronco. Oh, let's go right have a brush guard we want on this. Black. Black or do we want to go white on it? White would be a good accent for the front. We can change the color of the spare tire rack. 
Oh, you know what? We need to change the color of that, too. Change these over. Change those to white as well. I don't think the black will stand out on the brush color too much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How come that didn't change colors? I do. But I can't change the color of that. It's got to be chrome. Oh, man, that stinks. I guess he didn't have a paint mask on that, which I guess I should have known that by the fact that I ran it through the paint booth and it didn't change color, so duh. Use your brain there, Moof. Oh, uh, we gotta paint that too. Alright, so let's go paint the trunk. Match that. And then. Is that green too? Oh, that's green too. We gotta. I gotta go paint that as well. That cannot be green. All right, so we're looking for the trunk. I'm gonna paint this white. Where is it at? Or is that left rear door? I guess that's left rear door. Where's the good one at? There it is. Left rear door. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta paint all these again because I forgot they're all matte. All right, so that's painted. Didn't even think about that. Front end. Switch it over to matte. Paint that. And then paint that in matte. No, not metallic. Paint it matte. And then I'll have to do the top as well. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so put this in. What? Why did... Uh, what is going on here? I could have swore I'd just put it in a second ago. Rear left door window. Alright, rear left door window. Let's buy it again and put it in again. Or does it go in here like multiple times? All right, it's in there this time. Let's not get rid of it. So the question is, if I take this off, does it take all that stuff off as well? It does. <laughs> all right, well. Eh, you know. Learn as you go. All right, so let's repaint this in a matte finish. I don't think you can really tell that much, but um, I'm sure people were already getting their fingers limbered up to go, ah, you moron, you put it on there on matte finish or in a metallic and you got the car as a matte.
Don't put the window in yet. Put the door in. Now put the window in. Then the window in. That brush card's a little loud. It's a little loud and maybe it needs to be gray instead of white or black. The white definitely works on the, uh, on the light bar. But yeah, I think it looks like it's got a big, huge crest smile on the front of it. Hi there. I'm going to be your Bronco. <laughs> it looks like some really ridiculously overdone thing for cars. Hey, this is Bronk. He's our buddy. Hi, everybody. I had the Crest White Strips in last night. <laughs> oh, man. That's too funny. I'll think about that one for a second. Some short person's been riding in this car. Seat pushed all the way up to the glove compartment. And steering wheel. What parts did we use? I didn't even look. Uh, seat nine leather D and the cape steering wheel. All right. So now the question is, does this have a bench that goes in the back? Should, but I'm wondering if, because he put the roll bar in there, uh, or the roll cage in there, if that gets rid of it. Yeah, there's no, no roll cage for the body on it. I mean, uh, no rear bench. Should be a real rear bench in it, but again, he may have had to sacrifice that for the uh, replacing of the uh, the roll cage. All right, seat nine, leather D. Nah, I'm going leather A. Yeah, I like the highlights. Just two. I don't need three. Oh, and I needed a steering wheel, didn't I? Duh! The cape wheel is that one right down there. Oh man, those pencil thin steering wheels from back in the 70s. Gotta love them. It's like you weren't holding anything. All right. Tag time. Let's register it. Oops, that's the wrong tag. That's the wrong tag. White tag goes in the front. Like I said, where I live, we don't have front tags. There we go. That's a bit much. Let's see if we can tone it down. Let's see if we can turn down the what? It is, it's a bit, bit loud. Mm, full black or maybe like a gray.
Ah, I went metallic on it. Oh. Looks pretty good without it, you know? Yeah, that looks a lot better. Looks better. A little bit of tartar on the bumper makes it look a little bit better. Not as right there in your face. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, look at what we got here. Uh, everything global body condition still only 95%. What could we possibly be missing? What is not right? There are windows somewhere that is not right. Hmm. Oh, that is too cool. Everything opens up. Sweet. So what is not 100% on the back of this thing? It's got to be something with this stupid back window. All right, let's put everything... The window is in there. That window is back in. That window is in. That window is in. Oh, I know what it is. It's the tail lights. I know what it is. It's the tail lights. I keep forgetting them. I think go back to normal so I can close those. That's what it is. I keep forgetting about them. I don't know why. I don't know why on this particular one, and they just don't stand out. There we go. Eventually, I figure all things out. 100% across the board. 58651 bucks. You know, not the most profitable car we've ever done, but it does look pretty good. I do like it. Nice. Got to get a screenshot of this. Get a. Hmm. What do I want to do? Maybe right there. That'll work. All right, let's take it for a drive. Head out to the old airport, and uh, we'll take a look at it. The oil. Oh, jeez. Oh, really, I went through all that and forgot to put oil in the engine. Well, I'm just a moron. Do, do, do. Should have done that before I even moved it off of the uh, off the lift. I was so excited to paint it. Can't really see what I'm doing here. Can't really move around. Don't have any camera control to let me move. But since I saw oil flowing down the front of the motor, I know that it's it's done now. Now we can go to the airport. Well, I'm glad I got somebody doing quality control at the shop. Just double checking my work. Going, uh, your boss. By the way, you forgot to put oil in there. That would have been embarrassing. Build it up, start it up, sling a rod, start all over again. And the interior looks good in this thing. It does look good. I like it. Uh, the green's a little, um, a little bit different in the sunlight, but I think matte was a good finish on it. Oh, this thing's gonna be squirrely as I'll get out. that suspension wobble 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 we should be able to roll it oops put it off the wall that is funny Let's watch it from here Dip to the left, dip to the right, dip to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. 
<laughs> not bad, not bad at all. Will it lay appeal? That's the next question. That last Ford we had didn't. tell you what you get drunk trying to drive that thing though the way it bounces all over the place all right guys that's gonna do it for today i hope you guys have enjoyed our build with our little ford bronco uh don't forget if you want to get it there is a link down in the description for you and uh yeah jump on over there to the steam forums and uh grab it for yourself that is it for today we'll be back with another build tomorrow and uh, again, if you liked it, make sure you smack the like button for me. Leave a comment down below. Share the video with your friends. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos daily. All right. Until next time. Thanks for coming out, everybody. See you later. Stay safe. God bless you. Bye-bye.